when you get into soldering, you'd probably be forgiven uh, for avoiding surface mount devices and tattling circuit boards with that type of stuff on it. Uh, because let's face it, electronics live in a microscopic world. And unless you've got the right equipment, you're probably going to struggle. Um, you're probably used to using just the normal type of solder. Um, you can buy thinner stuff for surface mount. But there is another way of getting around uh, doing surface mount um, components, uh, which will make life a lot easier. And that is solder paste. Now, this stuff is like a thick cream that you can put on uh, to the pads onto the circuit board. Um, you, you, you can basically do both sides at the same time and then put your, your component onto it before heating it up and letting that solidify. It works really well and if you're struggling with the size of the components, because let's face it, a lot of them are absolutely frightening. Here's, here's a resistor off a kit, which I've just dropped. Great, I'm being trolled by a resistor now. All right. That is basically the size of the resistor. Now, if you're thinking you've got a solder iron, you find the thinnest tip, and then you've got the solder itself, the width of it, trying to solder something like that, most people would probably run a mile from. So using solder paste will help overcome that. So I'll tackle this board now, and basically I'll put down blobs of the solder paste on the, the pads for these resistors and just show how easy it actually is. But clearly this is into the field where you do need a bit more gear than just a normal soldering iron. You'll need a rework station, a uh, hot air station, and ideally you do need the microscopic cameras. Uh, unless your eyesight is absolutely A1 and perfect, you'll need one of these setups. So you can actually see uh, a lot better on the screen uh, what you're actually doing, because if you're actually looking with your normal eyes, it can be an absolute nightmare. So. I'm going to start putting bits of the solder paste down onto the circuit board. Um, I'll come back to you when I've done that, and I'll, then I'll start layering on the uh, the resistors before I get the hot gun out and just melt the whole lot. Everything sucks up onto the pads, and all the resistors are perfect. Much better than what I could do than with the solder iron and the normal solder. So we're back in a sec. Now we're just having a quick rethink about how to approach all this and record everything now, it isn't about building a PCB board, it's about this stuff, solder paste, because I know there's a lot of people out there that are just starting off learning about soldering, and they've probably seen this stuff on eBay, Banggood, whatever, and probably wonder what the hell it is, or whether it will benefit them. So that's all this video is really about. So all I'm gonna do is a couple of the resistors, and I'll do an IC. I'll just flip one over the side there, but it doesn't matter. Because the legs on these things, with a solder iron, most people would run a mile, as I said before. You know, electronics live in a microscopic world nowadays. Things were not made to be fixed. Things are made to be used and then chucked away. And then you're, you're the consumer that has to pay for the next best thing model out there. So phones, things like that, they're not made to be repaired just that some people can do it if they've got the right gear but the average person um not really so unless you've got all the gear and the knowledge and everything else so i'm going to do two resistors and an ic um you can get this stuff in syringes as well and i'll just say this because i'm not doing this commercially i do this as a bit of fun um i'm not a trained tech or anything i just learn as i go so i got a few of these about three years ago and the date on this I, I read somewhere it was May 2016 we're now in 2020 it has a shelf life of a year but it is still usable it's just not as liquidy um the best way i can put these on using a, some form of applicator is just picks toothpicks so if you've got a couple of toothpicks get some on one end and then what you'll need to do is use another pick just to put it on the board. I'll switch the Microsoft camera now so you can see it a little bit better. I'm having to uh, voice over this section because I've just um, 
I thought I was recording on the camera and as it turns out it wasn't so I've just ended up doing a few minutes uh, basically soldering the two resistors you see and it's not recorded um, I'll redo the an another two resistors in a second uh, it's typical though as soon as I press record everything goes pear shaped I don't know why um, but yeah, I'm going to get the solder flux in a second on the toothpicks. Now the board's got a little bit of heat on it now, so the uh, the solder paste will be a bit more gooey and liquidy and spread out. And there's not much you can really do about it spreading out. Um, even when I've used um, syringes to pipe this stuff out, because there's still residual pressure after you take your thumb off the plunger, you still get too much solder paste going onto the board so um this is like just the way I, i'm able to do it at the moment it looks messy it is messy um but the heat once you apply the heat it is bizarre it's like the scene out of terminator when the liquid metal rolls across the floor it's the same with this it looks like it's going to bridge everything and everything's going to be so bad um, but when when the heat gets put on um, the solder paste gets heat up and it just rolls into where you want to use it. Now, what I'm using here now, I'm just trying to remove a little bit. Um, these are micro applicators and I saw another YouTuber using these uh, for flux and I thought they were great, so I bought some. They're actually meant for ladies um, doing something with the eyelashes or something. There's different sizes. There's a small, there's that, that pink one, I forget. I think it's probably two mil. There's, I've got a smaller one, a blue one, which is about one and a half mil. But they're great for getting into places. The tools for soldering and that can come from anywhere. Um, surgical stuff, makeup stuff. It's always worth having a look. Right, I'm putting that resistor down. Yeah, it looks an absolute mess. You think it's going to go all barred and bridge. It won't. Um... As I said, it's a very strange thing that happens, but I do think it's easier than trying to tack one side down of the resistor using a solder iron and solder. Um, I'm heating this up now. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now, I, even though I'm recording, I haven't turned the blower up so there's no hot air coming out. I then realize my mistake. Turn up the blower, and if you just give it a few seconds, as I said, it's like the Terminator effect. It just rolls into place and sets everything how it should be. And the surface tension will pull the resistor to where it should be. And there we go. Weird, eh? I mean, there's no point in me doing all the resistors. You can clearly see what it is. And I did test afterwards to make sure there was no um, issues with continuity. Um, so I did use a meter for that. I, do, I think I'll probably do another resistor. You just have to bear with me because I've lost all the um, previous footage. So I'm just having to voice this over. Okay, another big blob of the stuff coming up. It's not the best thing to work with. You really do need to have a bit of a tissue spare as well just to wipe down the picks if, if you get too much on it. A little bit, as I said, a little bit goes a long way. But because there's heat on the board now, it's just flowing everywhere. So you're probably better setting it all first time round instead of doing it in little bits like this. But nonetheless, it'll it'll come right once the heat hits it. I'm just tidying up a little bit. I don't want it to uh, do anything that it shouldn't do, but... Hopefully, once the heat it, hits it, it will it will just flow. The resistors are so tiny, but believe it or not, these aren't the smallest ones. Yeah, there are a lot smaller than this. Um, so this is why you need to sort of practice and get used to this type of soldering. Now I should come back in a second with the heat. There's the nozzle. And then we get the Terminator effect where it rolls into place. If you see the film, you know what I mean. And it moves the resistor to where it should be. 
job done. Now, I was debating at this time whether to do an IC because everything that I'm doing when I record goes wrong. Um, so I'm feeling brave. I decided to do it. And it does look messy because all you're doing is smearing the paste straight across all the pins. You don't need to do each individual pin because it's all going to get sucked up on the pins anyway when you apply the heat. Again, the board is hot, so the solder paste tends to go a bit more gooey. And remember, it, with your real eyes, real eyes, with your proper eyes, you, you can barely see the legs on some of these ICs. So this way, it just really helps um, overcome bridging if you're using a solder iron. I'm having to take a, a bit of a guesswork and hope that the surface tension pulls the pins into where it should be. Because obviously the solder paste is blocking um, the visual on this. But I think in the top right corner you can see part of the pad. So I've aligned that and I just hope that the surface tension will just pull it in into the right place. I have used too much um, solder paste on this. Um, but I'm not going to edit the videos to make everything look perfect. I, I tend to leave all the mistakes in uh, because if you are starting off, you need to see it so you know how to deal with it afterwards. There's no point me doing a perfect video because if, if it did go pear shaped with yourself, then you're on your own. You can see in a second it's going to start to um, form itself, but there will be bridges. Right. There we go. It's it's gone to where it should do, but because I've used too much, um, it's bridged a few pins. So the way I get around that, still on applying a bit of heat, it's not going to shift. So hit it with flux, get plenty of flux on it. I should be reaching for the flux shringe. And as I said, with your, with your naked eye, you can barely see this area. <clears throat> That's why you do need either very good eyes or a microscope camera. Okay, this is the flux. I have to squeeze it, but you have to be careful not to really overdo it because it does pour out. I just got in today as well because I do have various widths of solder wick. Two, two and a half, three, three and a half mil widths. But I've just got this new stuff in from Solder Mop and it's um, 0.8. And it is perfect for this job. As you'll see, it just wicks it up. I think this is about the thinnest you can get. So taking off the second bridge, the flux really does help. And then the two top pins there. I mean, you can imagine if you try, I mean, that, that solder tip I'm bringing in now, that is two and a half mil. Um, when you're watching these videos on YouTube and you see the microscope cameras like this, you just don't realize how small these things are until you actually get them in front of you. And then you realize just how, how tiny it is and how, again, using the, the solder, solder uh, iron, it's bridged again. So it's, it's just a learning curve as to how much you're putting down because, as I said, I'm not, uh, I, I don't do this commercially, as you can probably gather. Um, it's just a hobby. I just do this now and again. So, um, just self-taught, as a lot of people are nowadays with YouTube. Access to YouTube, it's great. You can learn to do quite a lot of stuff. But as I always keep saying, you know, electronics live in a microscopic world. Uh, it's very hard to uh, do it unless you've got the right equipment. So, that's basically the board done. Um, all I'd would all I would do now, you can see the yellow tinge from the flux. I just put IPA over it uh, and brush it off, clean it up. Um, but that basically is how you use solder paste. So next time you see it on eBay or Banggood, I mean, what's it going to be? Four quid? Three, four quid, something like that. You might as well get a tube or a syringe of it, a tub of it or whatever, and just give it a try. I think it's worth having in your kit four times when you come across something like this.